What's up everybody, my name is Justin Cabral and in this video I'm going to be discussing the top three mistakes that I made when I first started going to the gym because I don't want you guys making them too. So let's get right into it. Alright guys, so before I get into the biggest mistakes that I made personally when starting out, I just wanted to say quickly, this video is not scripted, so I'm not reading from a prompt. I personally, I don't like when I feel like people are just reading from prompts. I want it to be a little bit more authentic and engaging. So. This is all just coming to me as it goes. I have the topics written down, but I don't wanna be reading from a prompt the entire time. So let's get right into it. All right, so the first mistake that I personally made and I feel like you might be making is not training hard enough. And I cannot stress the importance of this enough. A little bit of background about me. When I started lifting, I started lifting like four or five years ago, but I don't consider that to be actually when I started lifting because I wouldn't even consider what I was doing lifting. I would go down into my basement gym and I'd do like three sets of dumbbell curls and I'd call it a day. I'd be like, okay, I feel a little pump, I'm done. And you know, I never really pushed myself hard enough. I only really started actually going to a gym and pushing myself hard enough two years ago. So I really have been lifting for four years, but I wouldn't even consider them, you know, actual lifting years. So I've been lifting for two years. but. I wish when I started that I knew how to push myself past my limits. So when you get in there and you're first starting out, it could be a little bit intimidating because you know, you're know you trying something new and ultimately you're putting your body in a lot of discomfort and that could be you know, hard. So it's important to not just you know go in there and get complacent and start lifting like 15 pound dumbbells for 10 reps. When in real, in reality, T -t today, Junior, you could probably be doing 15 pound dumbbells for 15 reps, or you could be doing 20 pound dumbbells for 10 reps. And it's important to go in there and push past your limits every time you go in there. I don't mean, and I, I don't want you guys to take this the wrong way. I don't want you to go in there and try to max out on your first day in the gym. Cause that's how you're, you're gonna get either hurt or you know, yeah, you're gonna get hurt. So what I mean is go in there, pick a challenging weight and you know, the next workout you do, try to get one more rep out of it. The next workout after that, try to get one more rep out of it. And then the next workout after that, maybe you increase the weight by five pounds. And then after that you increase the reps one more, you know, so that's what I mean going in every day and training just a little bit harder than you did previously. I made that mistake where I just got used to going and putting in minimal effort and I was expecting results that just didn't come. And for those two years that I wasn't putting in enough effort, I said to myself, what, what's wrong? And so, once I started actually pushing myself and challenging myself, that's when my results like skyrocketed. So I can't stress this enough. Push yourself past your limits. It's going to feel uncomfortable. You're going to go in there and the next day you're going to wake up and you're going to be like, wow, I feel like I got hit by a semi truck. Especially if you're training legs or a big body part group like your back or your chest, you know, you're going to feel like crap. I still feel like crap when I wake up the next day. But you know, you're gonna have to learn to enjoy that pain. And once you get past that, you, like I'm telling you, your results are gonna skyrocket. So that's the first mistake that I made was not training hard enough. And I highly encourage you to just push yourself every single time. So before I cover the second mistake that I made, uh, if you could just hit the like button and maybe subscribe if you feel like you're learning something that really helps out with the algorithm. But yeah, let's get right into the second mistake that I've been making. All right, so mistake number two that I suffered from when I first started lifting was not having a good diet. Uh, when I started lifting in the beginning, my diet consisted of Wendy's, McDonald's, Burger King, Domino's, you know, those sort of things. What? And I didn't realize when I started out I just thought, oh, if I eat enough of this bad food, 
I'll have energy and I'll be able to fuel my workouts. Are you serious? That's couldn't be further from the truth. So diet is actually like 70 to 80% of fit, fitness and overall health. The gym is actually only like 20%. So you could work your butt off in the gym like every single day and push yourself extremely hard. And if your diet is crap, you won't see any progress. So it's important to A, eat enough protein. Typically, the general recommendation is eat about a gram per pound of body weight in protein. I wasn't doing that. I wasn't even tracking the protein. I was just eating a Big Mac and a Whopper, you know, whenever I felt hungry. And so I put on a lot of unneeded fat. Did I put on some muscle? Yeah, I did. But I put on probably the same amount, if not more, in pounds of fat. So the diet is crucial. And I don't mean you have to meal prep everything out. Personally, me, that's what I do now, but that's because I'm prepping for a bodybuilding show, I think in November or December, one of the two. But you don't have to meal prep everything out or count every calorie to the exact. But it's good to get a general idea of what you're taking in, what your body burns, what your body needs from your workouts, how much protein you need. So like I said earlier, one gram per pound of body weight in protein and just don't binge eat, you know, don't starve yourself, but don't binge eat because A, you're going to put on fat, a lot of fat, or B, you're going to not be able to put on any muscle. If you are not eating enough, you will not put on muscle. I actually had two people say to me, why am I not gaining muscle? Each of them, I think one is about 180 pounds and the other is about like 190. And I asked them, I said, what are you eating in a day? And they both were like, well, I don't know. And I'm like, well, you see, there's your issue. Because when they actually went and tracked what they were eating, it only amounted to 2000 calories. And for men their age, 2000 calories is not enough to build muscle. I'm surprised that they were maintaining. But once they started tracking what they needed, and once they started adding the calories and the proteins and all that, the, the stuff that they needed to put on muscle, they were like, wow, I actually feel a little stronger. You know, two weeks later, they said, oh, I put on a pound. And so that's why knowing what your body needs and knowing what you're taking in is so crucial. It's like I said earlier, probably 80% diet, 20% what you do in the gym because if your diet's trash, your physique's gonna be trash, you're gonna feel like trash, so eat the right stuff. That was a mistake that I made. If I could go back and redo it, I would. I wouldn't be in the Big Macs, I wouldn't be in the uh, brownies from Domino's, I would be eating some grilled chicken, I'd be eating some lean ground beef, some sweet potatoes, some protein shakes. So yeah, that is the second mistake that I made when I first started lifting. The third mistake that I made when I started lifting, and this is kind of two mistakes in one, but they encompass the same sort of thing, is not taking enough rest days and not getting enough rest in general. So rest days are actually the days where your body recovers the most and repairs the muscle that you broke down during your workouts. So if you're going nonstop seven days a week, not taking any rest, you continuously are breaking down muscle after muscle after muscle after muscle, your body doesn't have the time to catch up and repair itself. For me, when I started out, I thought, you know, oh, I, I need to be in the, I need to be working out seven days a week. Not the case. Recently, my coach just put me on a five day a week split. So I actually had two rest days in the week instead of one. So rest days are so crucial and rest in general is very crucial. So the other aspect is sleep. Sleep is not talked about enough. When I first started lifting, I was maybe getting about five hours of sleep a night, if that, because when I first started lifting, I was in high school. I had to be at school for seven o'clock. 
So I had to wake up at six to, you know, get dressed, shower, eat breakfast, all that other stuff. But my issue was I would be going to bed at like midnight or later. So there were nights where I would go to bed at one or two in the morning. And that was pretty average after working out that day. And I only got five hours of sleep. And so I woke up feeling lethargic and extra sore, more sore than I would be because my body what didn't have enough time to repair itself. Your body during sleep is when your body repairs itself the most. When you're resting on the couch, does it repair itself? Yes, but when you're sleeping, it's in overdrive. That's when it repairs itself the most. So I wasn't sleeping enough and I felt like crap and I was having a hard time putting on muscle. So I noticed when I started getting more sleep, right now I currently get about nine to 10 hours a night. My performance in the gym went up, my muscle mass went up, and my fat mass went down. So if you're trying to put on muscle or lose fat, sleep is very key. If you're not getting enough sleep, you're gonna feel terrible. You are not gonna be able to put on muscle as easily, and you're not gonna be able to lose fat as easily. And same thing goes with the rest days. If you're not letting your body rest enough, you are going to run into issues and it will hinder your progress. And it did hinder my progress for a pretty long time. I can't stress this enough. Do not make that mistake. You will thank yourself later. So those are the biggest mistakes that I made when I first started lifting. And I hope you aren't making them, but I also hope that if you are making them, that this video maybe shed some light into those mistakes because it could be costing you serious gains. It could be costing you, it, for me, it cost me two years, you know. Uh, if I had known what I know now, I could be so much far ahead of where I am. But I wanna help you guys, I wanna help people. So sharing my experience, I hope that helps you guys. If you did like this video, if you wanna see a part two, or if you wanna see some tips for new lifters, I do have a series on TikTok and YouTube Shorts. Uh, that I do go over some tips for new lifters. But if you want a more in-depth video like this or a part two, uh, leave a comment down below and let me know. Uh, if not, I hope you liked and enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.